two, draw a curve that describes the energy of a system with hydrogen and chlorine atoms at varying distances, then find the minimum energy of this curve two ways. And then we're going to do one way in this video. So the first way, letter A, is we're going to use the bond energy found in table 8.1 to calculate the energy for one single HCl bond. Hint, how many bonds are in one mole or in a mole? Okay, so let's first draw that curve. And maybe I will draw the curve, maybe we'll split this down the middle and we'll draw the curve on this side because on this side we have the bond energy, so we'll do the math. So now we just have to draw a curve. That's basically a graph, right? And the axes for your graph is you're trying to have together the H bond. So maybe we'll say that this yellow with its nucleus is H. And then we have chlorine, which is a little bigger than hydrogen with its nucleus, Cl, and they're trying to come together, right? Oh boy. Maybe I shouldn't have drawn it all the way down there, right? So let's see. Um, how am I going to do this dilemma? I guess I'm just going to have to restart, right? And I don't really like the yellow anyway, but let's just do the, um, the curve, right? So as we're going from left to right, we're going to be talking about the distances of how far away the atoms get or how close they are, right? If you are here where there's zero distance, that means that just for this, we're going to draw the hydrogen. It's going to be very small. And then the chlorine is going to be larger. There we go. And if it's at zero distance, that's literally means that they're right on top of each other, right? And keep in mind that the electrons are trying to bind. So you don't want those atoms to be directly over each other because negatives, they will reflect, they will deflect each other, right? If you have two of the same charges, they don't want to touch. So if you get those electrons really, 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 really close, and maybe I will just draw it like this, you know, just something basically that it's just so obnoxiously close, you know, they don't want to be that close. The y-axis is going to be just the energy. Now, let's just start at the zero distance mark. Do you think that um, the energy that it takes to be so close, right on top of each other, is it going to be low? Let's just say that this is low and we have zero energy in the middle. So we have very, very, very low and very, very, very high. Remember, energy is bad in chemistry. The more energy you have, the more unstable the thing that you're talking about. So since this is completely unfavorable, this is too close, the energy is going to be way, 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 way high. So then the distance goes, you know, farther and farther away. So let's just say now that maybe we have the ideal relationship of the chlorine being over here and the H is just right here, right? They're, they're basically touching, they're overlapping, those electrons are perfectly together. This is the right type of format. Would that have very, very, very high energy or very, very, very low energy? Yeah, this is the most stable. So this would be all the way down here. This would be the most favorable. So as you go from a shorter distance to a longer distance, your energy is going to precipitously drop. And let's just say that the, the, the number is like all the way down here, right? Doesn't have to be correct, but the slope is the thing that has to be right. But now let's just say that you're going to now just bring them farther and farther apart. So let's just draw this again. So we have a small chlorine with its little dot. And now the, sorry, the little hydrogen. And then we have the chlorine and they're nowhere near each other, right? The distance has completely increased. Well, what's going to happen here? Are we going to be really high energy, really low energy, or are they going to act as two separate entities? Yeah, they're too far away now, so they're going to be two separate entities, and that's when your energy is zero. So when you're approaching zero, 
that means that they're acting basically on their own. So the, the, your energy should be roughly around here and it kind of like goes like that. And then it will just kind of keep going. That is your curve. The idea that it starts really, really high, swoops down low because that's the most favorable position and then goes back to zero. Um, that's your curve that describes the energy system. So now let's actually do the calculation. So in this case, I'll just say separate units, separate units. Okay. So now we're going to use the bond energy found in table 8.1 to calculate the energy for one single HCl bond. Okie dokie. So in this case, I went to table 8.1 and I found out for HCl, the bond energy is 431 kilojoules per mole. But they gave us a little hint here. They said, how many bonds are in a mole? Well, when we talk about HCl, if we draw this uh, valence structure, right, or the Lewis structure, I know that hydrogen is going to come together with chlorine. Hydrogen has one valence electron and chlorine has a seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're going to make a bond and we're good to go, right? But now the thing is, is that when you draw this Lewis structure, do you have one mole or do you have one molecule? Yeah, you have like, you have basically one molecule, right? This is, we're only just drawing one single molecule. But we know because of Avogadro's number that for every one mole of HCl, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of HCl. So technically, if for in one molecule, you have one bond, right? There's only a single bond here, one bond. Then we know that if we have this amount of molecules, and it's a one to one relationship, we also know that we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd bonds of HCl in one mole of HCl because this is a one to one relationship. And now I'm just going to use this information to find out what's the energy for a single bond. This is what we're looking for. So I'm going to say we want to find out that energy. So I'm going to use this number for the HCl that I found 431 kilojoules. And that's kilojoule per mole. We don't want the mole anymore. We basically want the bonds. So in this case, the moles, so the mole is going to go on the top to cancel out and the bonds are going to go on the bottom. So one mole for every, maybe I should scooch this over a little bit, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd bonds, moles cancel out. And now this is going to be kilojoule per bond. So let's see what the answer is. 431 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the, I love that E button, 23rd. And there you go. And since this value started off with three sig figs, I guess we'll cut it off at three sig figs. So it's a very, very small amount of energy, but you're only talking about literally one bond. So 7.16 times 10 to the negative 22nd kilojoules for a single bond. So there you go. If you want to put the slash bond, that's fine, but I'll, I'll just keep it for, you know, I guess, I guess we'll put per bond, right? So kilojoule per bond. And I'll just bring this down here and Call it, call it a, call it a question, right? There you go. Okie dokie. So I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you all are having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard and good luck on your tests and quizzes. I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.